Well, hello friends, Niz here, and oh, it's been about like an hour and a half since I recorded the last episode and finished editing it and rendering it, but we're back again, uh, shortly, in a short amount of time for me, and probably longer amount of time for you, but, you know, that's the way the world works, and time is a finicky thing. Either way, uh, didn't do it last episode, but again, reminder, there is a document in the description that will have most likely more in-depth information as I I tend to gloss over as I'm doing most of this over memory and while I watch uh, back what I'm doing and then I condense it all. So yeah, a uh, document in the description that has all the information uh, from past episodes detailed by episode so you can kind of get in the gist of what episode I tend to cover certain things and so you can go back and watch them if you want. Uh, yeah, I started it late, so it's not in the previous episodes that I mentioned this, but, you know, it's done now, so make sure to check it out if you've made it to this point. Other than that, without further ado, let's get into, like, what's actually happening. So, I briefly mentioned, uh, that you have a weapon, a secondary, and an emblem. Uh, I didn't mention the secondary, actually. A weapon is, you know, generic. That makes sense. You have to have a weapon to attack. The emblem, I barely touched on in uh in one of the episodes on the fourth job advancement episode but the emblem is weapon and the third the secondary i should guess i should call it the second the secondary uh are the trio they make up the they are able to be potential which will eventually go into much more detail but to give a brief summary potential is an extra three lines that you can assign to equipment there's four tiers of potential, uh, rare, epic, unique, legendary from lowest to highest, uh, and the weapon, secondary, and emblem, or WSE, are to be optimized, and they are th the only three items that can be rolled for certain lines, and I believe that is IED, boss damage, and attack. And that's important as those three obviously give you the biggest damage range, uh, d damage increases, your biggest range increases. So, with that noted, I'm just going to go into the brief detail of them without being potentialed, we're not getting to that yet, but the brief coverance of where to get your secondary. So, secondaries are pretty easy to come by, but the higher tier ones are much much more difficult to come by. Secondaries can be obtained from Neville. He is a uh, he's a he's a secondary seller in Henesis Market. I believe he's in other locations too, like uh, Omega Sector and Leafry. But uh, for the most part, the the, the hundred one I'm a hundred percent sure on is Henesis Market. He sells the level 60, 30, 30, 60, and a hundred secondary for your class for every class. Do note that some classes, uh, mainly Phantom and Mercedes, off the top of my head, have secondaries, but they, the regular ones they get do not give extra stats, but they can still be potential. There is an exception to that, as Phantom and Mercedes do have a secondary that gives stats, but it's much more difficult to obtain. So do not worry because I've never done Princess No, which is the best in slot secondary you can get, and I will eventually learn how to. So, not quite yet, but we'll, we'll, we will get there eventually. But for those secondaries that do initially give stats, the basic ones that give stats, there is a two other, there's three others I believe that you can get. There is um, another um, uh, another secondary, best, better, that's better than your one from Neville, that is located in the Evolution Lab. It costs Evo Coins, which are a drop and quest item you can get from doing the uh, Evo Lab simulations. And they also drop from the mobs inside of the Evo Lab. So in the background, I was doing the pre-quest for the Evo Lab. You get three entrances a day, 15 minutes each. And occasionally there will be events where Evo Lab drops two times the amount of coins. So it's good to take advantage of those. Uh, the only benefit of, the, of these secondaries is two weapon attack and magic attack. Um, but, you know, that for at least for Cygnus Knights. But that is a decent amount of damage, especially when you start getting into percent attack. 
which is the potential lines that these are capable of rolling. Uh, so I covered that. I uh, that is what I'm going for in this episode. I did my the first day you unlock Evo Lab, you can only do two 15 minute sessions. Uh, but that's besides the point. Normally, you'll be able to do three 15 minute sessions for a total of 45 minutes inside the Evo Lab. So yeah, a lot of time, and you'll most likely spend about a total of like. Ugh, like four and a half hours total so like divide that by 15 uh doing evo lab and do remember that drop coupons big spider work to affect the drop multiplier so make sure you keep those active so, at all times i believe the any secondary from evo lab costs 400 coins and yeah it gives you a at least the sickness knight one gives you two extra weapon attack and two extra magic attack which is quite useful as once you get into percent attack, that is definitely increasing your range more. The next uh, emblem you or secondary you can get that is better is uh, the, I think it's the anniversary, and there's also other event ones that you can get that are better than the Evo Lab one. So look out for those. But currently there are none going on at this time, so I decided to go for the Absa Lab ones you know just to make sure i had as much damage as possible since i only have one character i have no link skills i have no legion bonuses it's very difficult to gain damage without using potential and so you get what you can get the last secondary i want to mention is princess nose princess no is a jump quest that requires a sengoku pre-quest line and it allow it unlocks the ability to fight princess no I am unsure of how to do this solo, and I will have to learn, or I will have to boost it, or I will have to participate in a party. I will not know until I figure it out, but you can, to my knowledge, you get 10 entrances a week. The first four award bronze boxes, the next three award silver boxes, and the last three award gold boxes. So you have to do at least seven runs to get one gold box, as they're awarded in order from lowest to highest. Again, to my knowledge, I will have to do more research and the document will definitely detail more information. But we will go over Princess No in a much greater detail when I eventually start running it myself. So, Princess No you has secondaries. You have to open the gold boxes to, boxes to even gain a chance at getting a secondary. It's a low chance, and then it's an even significantly lower chance that you're going to get it for the right class. It's nice that I'm a Cygnus Knight, as uh, it means that I, I don't have to focus on getting a very specific one, as long as I get a Cygnus Knight one, you know, which is rules out five classes, like, I guess I have a significantly higher chance. I'm unsure how it, how it rolls, but... You know, we'll get to that when we get to that. But the next couple of days I spent working on my Evo Lab secondary as I wanted some damage boosts because I have not yet started potentialing items. Uh, I did not note ever, but I should have noted it directly in the first episode. There is a gift box you're given for your first character on reboot. Do note this this is awarded to every character you make until it is fully used. There are stages of the box and I recommend you do not as in don't uh or yeah, stay far stay the hell away from that box until you are ready and understand what it holds. It holds some very powerful items and they're very very useful. So I highly highly recommend holding off and opening it until you're much much further in the game and know what each item does and how you can use it properly. Uh, we will go over in more detail when I do open it myself. Other than that, uh, the next thing I did is I went over, it's already been 10 minutes, wow. Uh, the next thing I, I briefly go cover are the, is the entrances, the entrance training to Korean folk town. So we'll get to that next. Just going to briefly gloss over where I'm training. I am training in, uh, well, actually, it's worth noting now. Um, training in a burning area. Burning areas are areas that are not trained in often that can gain up to 10 stages, sometimes 15, depending on if there's an event of bonus XP. Each stage is 10% XP. Uh, so at stage 10, which is normally the max, 
and normally the cap is 100% extra XP, so 2x. Uh, I do not know how it works in the XP multiplier, as there's two types of XP multipliers. One that applies to base XP, which is the initial white line drop, and every other thing is separate, so it's a yellow line. And I believe burning fields are separate, so they're yellow lines. They multiply the base to come up with their value, uh, and then apply it sec in a different line. So, do note that. Uh, I'm training at Master Robos in Ludibrium. Uh, I don't normally mention my training spots as there's many, ma many guides on where to train and you can always ask people. And if you want to ask me, I guess you can. But uh, as a first character, I recommend not going here until you're like at least 110-ish, 115-ish. Uh, and I covered, I, I, I guess you can briefly gain an idea of where I trained through the little background segments I have running. Anyways, once I made it to 125, which was the goal level, I made my way to Moon, uh, not Moon, yeah, Moon Bunnies in Korean Folktown. Uh, I did not train here, per se. I did the quest, uh, the quest to kill 120 Moon Bunnies. Throughout Korean Folktown, there are quests. I believe there is one for small tigers, stumps, moon bunnies, big tigers, blins, nine-tailed foxes, and the goblin kings. Uh, each awarding meso and uh, XP, and it's a large amount of XP. You'll easily level from them. I would not recommend coming here as early as I did, especially with the case of me being 125, no legion, no other buffs, and I was lucky enough to have an MVP buff, I believe, and a Blessing of the Guild, but other than that, I was struggling to kill these mobs, and I had Kishin as well, so that's another benefit that most players won't have access to, but I'm using just so I can speed up the production of these videos. Uh, so I would train, I, you're gonna be doing all the quests here, uh, I wouldn't start them until like 130-ish, 132, 134, even as late as 135, because you're gonna be in Korean Folktown until like on your first character, most likely till 150, just because of how good uh, Yellow Goblin Kings are and how easy the map is to navigate, and especially since it's just three roads, it's very easy to mob on. Uh, can't say much more than that, as we'll, we we finished training here, doing the quest line, and then I trained to 140, which will be covered in the next episode, as that is another significant mark in your training and your progression in MapleStory. I'll see you then. Bye, friends.